Greetings and welcome to another video in the Voice Attacker News series. In this episode, we're going to look at the Begin Compare action in a bit more detail. And we've already looked at it before in a couple of other commands. In the, the Raise and Deploy Landing Gear that we had in a previous episode. Again, we've got the Begin Condition. We're going to look at it in a little more detail. We're going to open up a new command. I'm not going to give it a name or anything because I'm not going to actually be using it. Go to other and advanced and we've got the begin a condition. Now you've got two choices. You can either do a single condition or you can do a compound condition builder. But we'll get to the second one as we go through. So you select that and then you get your options up. The small integer, um, that's a legacy. It's not, it's, it's not something you really need to use anymore. Um, it's just there as a legacy. In case people have got profiles that still use it. You've got your text, which is just any text. Boolean is true or false. Integer, which are whole numbers. Decimals, which are, well, decimals. Date and time. And then device state, which is an interesting one. So you can check to see if a keyboard key is pressed. Mouse button, joystick buttons, depending on what you've got set up. You know, if any key or if, if a specific key is pressed. But if we go for, let's just go for a true or false one to begin with. If I have an aim, there we are. All. What we're going to look for is if this variable is either is equal to, that's not equal, has been set or has not been set. And it's either true or false. Or you can also compare it to another variable. If you've got something you know, to set itself elsewhere. And the same with the text one. You know, variable name, or you can use a token in this case, something maybe like the command segment token we used in a previous video. Again, you've got more options here. So, because it's text, you can say, does it contain something? We can look for a part of a word or a whole word, which is quite useful. And again, the options ends with, begins with, does not contain, has been set, has not been set. Again, you can also do another variable. The integer is exactly the same again. But obviously the options are slightly different. You know, is it less than, equal to, greater than? And then this all the same as the uh, integer. And date and time. Before, before, equal to, after, after, equal to. Get the idea. Go back to the true or false. Leave it as a uh, false. Okay, that that starts the whole condition statement. We've got the begin, and then we've got the end. If we put something in here, let's just do let's do a key pressing. So if the variable equals false, it will press the key. If the variable equals true, it will skip this and just carry on down the rest of the actions. Now you've got also got an option on the end condition here. Go into it. Got these two options here. So when this block is reached, exit command if condition is met. When this block is reached, exit command if condition is not met. Now this way you can break out of a command if the condition is met or not met, depending on what you want it to do. By default, they're both off, and it will just carry on through regardless. So that's the very basic, simple part of it. Now, what you can do, you can edit with the condition builder, right click and click on it. And we've got the and or or options. So we can say, if this variable equals false and, we can do a completely different set of options. We can say, if, let's do, let's go with home. Oh, give me a mistake. So if 
home is pressed, the also options is not pressed or only key pressed. We could say we we'll do that. Okay. What it's now is looking for is it says is the variable false and is the keyboard key home pressed? If both those conditions are true, it will continue. If it isn't, it will skip over. Go back in and edit this. And that one. And now you can do an or condition as well. You can say or something contains bread. Okay, that. Now we've got an either or. So if that variable equals false or that variable contains thread, it will do the action. We could also, on top of that, we could also add another and condition into the second set of conditions. So we can now say and do an integer this one just to make it different. So their level is greater than or equal to 10. So now we've got this here. So it says if the variable equals false or something contains thread and level is greater than or equal to 10, we'll do the option in there. Get rid of this for two secs because we don't need it. Get rid of that there, get rid of that there. You can also move the uh, priority up and down on there if you want to, as well as edit. Go back to something simple. Well, that's very, very basic. Now, you, it's, if it's true or false, it will do or not do, as the case may be. What we could also do, we go back to other and advanced. We've got the option to do an else if or just a plain else. So if we do just the else, we can say if the variable equals false, do this else. Whatever the variable is set to, it could be not set, set, true, anything other than false. Do something else. So in this case, we'll do press key Q. That's very explicit. That is, you know, if if that's not set to false, do that regardless. Now the other thing we can do is we can just change this. Right, so log happened. Okay, nothing happened. So it's going to say, if that's false, do that else, nothing happened. What we can do now, go back to other and advanced, and then we've got the else if condition block. It's exactly the same as the beginner condition. You've got a single condition, or you've got, and you've got the builder. You now say, else if something contains. So if something contains stone, we'll do let's just say if that variable equals false, do that. Else if the variable something contains stone, right to the log, you have stone. And we can keep on adding these in. As many times as we want, we can go to here and then go back in. There we go. We do that. And Something contains wood. We can get it to the back to the log. You have wood. You also, to save a bit of time, you can highlight the two bits you want, right click, and then just go duplicate. Or you can do Control C and Control V. And if we change this to Seeds. Well, now we've got multiple options there. So it will go through one after the other. It will go through and it will check to say, is that false? Yes or no? Does that contain this? Does that contain this? Does that contain this? But as soon as it finds something, it will stop. So as soon as it finds one of these, very, one of these conditions to be true, it will stop and not look at any more. So if it stops on that one there, it'll say, okay, you, you have stone, it'll jump straight to the end and then carry on with the rest of the actions, which is how you normally want to do things because it's more efficient.
what you could do how about this oh, up a new one the other way of doing it is you do begin equal condition like this and then something equals So with this, it's going to check each one of these individually. Does that equal silver? No. Nope. Okay. Does that equal gold? No. Nope. Does that equal iron, copper, etc.? It will check each of those statements one after the other, no matter if any of those are true. So if it can go down to here and say, oh, something equals iron. Okay. And it will do whatever is in that you know, compare command, and then it will carry looking, which is a waste. It's bad. It's a waste of resources. It's not necessarily best practice. Ideally, you really want to do it else if because that way, as soon as it gets to the condition that's true or it meets the criteria, it stops doing processing the other commands in that set. It's more efficient that way. Whilst you can do it this way, it's not best practice as i say we'll get rid of that one now it disappear you can also do nested begins okay so what we can then do if we get rid of that one in there so if that equals false we can then go in and we can do another addition we can say if equals Food. We can then do another condition check. We can do no something else. So if that's false, it will then check that one to see if that equals food. And then if it does equal food, it will write that to the log. And again, we've got a separate end condition there as well. But every begin has to have an end. And when you start nesting them, it can get a little confusing, you know. Looking sometimes where the begins and the ends are. But if we delete that one there for a moment and we try and OK this, it gives us a warning saying, it says this command contains condition box that cannot be correlated. You have too many begins or too many ends. OK, and we can see there. So if we just look here, we've got that column going down. There's no end on it. We can see that one there is indented on that line there. So we can see. Okay, we need to put an end condition in there. As soon as we put one in there, everything moves over accordingly. You can see that it lines up. So that's lined up there. That's lined up there. But just something to be aware of if you're doing multiple begins and ends, especially when they're nested. Because it can get a little confusing. What you could do, to make things easier for yourself, is you copy all selected this text. And we open up something like Notepad++. Looking at it, it's something like a text editor. You can see, you know, sometimes it's easier to see the layout a bit easier. So that's some examples to how to use the uh, begin condition. Hopefully it's useful. Give it a play and um, good luck. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe too and share the video out. Until the next one. Take care and I'll see you soon. Toodles.